at the confluence of the Tunga and the Bhadra rivers stands Hampi, the magnificent capital of the erstwhile Vijayanagara Empire. In 1296 AD, Alauddin Khilji entered the Devagiri kingdom and pressed further south. The ancient Indian culture and dharmic philosophies were endangered by this onslaught. A few kings united to fight back and it was in this backdrop that the kingdom of Vijayanagara was founded. The kingdom was established to protect and propagate the ancient culture and philosophies of India. Sage Vidyaranya took an active part in establishing this empire. Art and literature flourished. Ancient temples were renovated and new temples built. The central attraction of Hampi was and is the magnificent Virupaksha temple towering over the ancient city. But the Vijayanagara kings were not the ones who built this temple. This temple dedicated to Lord Shiva existed much before Hampi was made the capital of the Vijayanagara empire. In fact, the Virupaksha temple dedicated to Lord Shiva is in the form of a Swayambhuva Linga and Swayambhu Lingas are one of the most sacred representations of the infinite. These are self-manifested lingams that legends say have existed since time immemorial. Hampi is far more ancient than the Vijayanagara Empire. It has a past that goes way back in time. Hampi is mentioned in the Ramayana and Puranas as the Pampa Devi Tirthakshetra. Hampi was Kishkinda, the spot where Rama and Lakshmana met Hanuman and his army. A few kilometers away from the more crowded sites of Hampi lies the Malyavanta Hill. It is a serene place and not very touristy due to its relative isolation. On top of this hill lies the Malyavanta Raghunatha temple dedicated to Lord Rama. According to the Ramayana, some sources say that Lord Rama, along with Lakshmana, camped here twice, once with Masita during the period of their exile and once when they were waiting for Hanuman and his army so that they could march onwards to Lanka. This temple too is very ancient. Even though the Vijayanagara kings constructed the temple premises, the Garbhagraha, the Sanctum Sanctorum, predates the Vijayanagara Empire by centuries. Incredibly, you will see people chanting the Ramacharitra Manas here 24-7-365. Any day of the year, any time of the day, you will find people chanting. This temple never closes. Another narrative mentions that on top of this hill, Rama worships Shiva in the form of a self-manifested Swayambhuva Lingam. Sure enough, you can see an ancient shrine dedicated to Lord Shiva a few meters away on the top. On top of the hill is a small stream of water running through a cleft in the rocks. Legend says that Lakshmana shot an arrow into the boulders to create this stream of water. And this stream never dries up, not even in the hottest summer. The stream is called Lakshmana Tirtha. Legends state that Rama used the water to perform Abhishekas when he was meditating on Shiva. You can still see the beautiful carvings of the Nandis and the Shivalingas that are on these rocks. Ancient and unique temples are still being unearthed in Hampi. One such temple is the Prasanna Virupaksha temple, also called the Patala Ishwara temple. This temple had been buried underground for 300 years before it was unearthed in 1980. The ceiling is at the ground level. 
and it is completely inundated with water at most times of the year. The source of the water is the river Tungabhadra. The Garbhagraha is dark and a number of bats adorn the ceiling. Unfortunately, the original Shivalingam seems to have been removed. This is not the only underground construction in Hampi. A kilometer away, in the royal enclosure, there is another secret underground chamber. Some archaeologists have surmised that Hampi might have many more underground passageways and these still need to be explored. All representations of the god energy were revered in Hampi. And building temples in Hampi was not just restricted to kings. Badavilinga is a temple dedicated to Shiva and the lingam is almost 12 feet in height. This temple, legends say, was built and consecrated by a peasant woman. Badawa literally translates to poor in the local language. The temple is perennially inundated in water since a canal passes near this temple. The Ugra Narasimha temple, dedicated to the Narasimha avatar of Lord Vishnu, stands right next to the Badavilinga temple. There was a statue of a goddess Lakshmi on this statue of Ugra Narasimha that has since been destroyed. You can see the signs of destruction in both these temples. By 1447, the kingdom of Vijayanagara grew weak due to repeated invasions of the Bahmani sultans. They would raid and plunder the kingdom sporadically. But all this changed in the year 1509. The 25-year-old Krishna Devaraya was crowned the king of Vijayanagara. It did not take too long for his first battle. The young king led his armies from the front. He defeated the sultans and reunited many territories into the Vijayanagara Empire. A deeply spiritual man, he renovated many ancient temples and built new ones. His crowning architectural achievement was the Vijayavitala temple. Intricate carvings, stone chariots, monolithic pillars, all show the mastery of the craftsmen who built this temple. King Krishnadeva Raya also built the magnificent Hazara Rama temple. This temple has scenes from the Ramayana engraved on its walls. And as we move around the temple, circumambulating the temple, we can see the entire story of the epic Ramayana. The carvings on the outside of these temples showcase the citizens of Vijayanagara participating in the building of the temple. The animals that helped build these magnificent structures were not left out either. The Vijayanagara Empire used elephants to build and at times defend the city. And the friendship still continues. Hampi was an important centre of trade and it attracted people from all over the ancient world. The Portuguese traveller Domingo Pais, who visited the Vijayanagara Empire in 1520, describes Hampi in his memoirs. What I saw from thence seemed to me as large as Rome and very beautiful to the sight. The people in the city are countless in number, so much so that I do not wish to write it down for fear that it should be thought fabulous. Hampi was a fertile land nourished by the river Tungabhadra, which has sustained life in this region since the dawn of time. The kings, leaving nothing to chance, harnessed the mighty river and built a brilliant irrigation system to ensure a bountiful harvest to their citizens. Hampi was considered to be the best provided city in the world. Domingo Pace, the Portuguese traveller, writes, 
there are many groves of trees within it in the gardens of the houses and many conduits of water which flow into the midst of it this is the best provided city in the world and is stocked with provisions centuries later even now agriculture is the mainstay of this area in around 1529 ad the emperor krishna deva raya died of an illness and the decline of hampi began in 1565 a group of muslim sultanates allied together and entered into a war with the vijayanagara empire they banded together and attacked the kingdom and this was the battle of talikota a couple of generals defected to the other side and finally king ramaraya was captured and beheaded what followed was a massive destruction of the temples and the infrastructure of hampi and the vijayanagara empire ancient temples secret passageways uniquely designed irrigation channels and carvings with esoteric symbolisms were lost to time in hampi anywhere you see is a slice of history even stones in the middle of the river were tastefully carved even after widespread destruction and centuries of neglect some of these temples of hampi still stand tall these ancient structures have withstood both the ravages of time and war but what secrets they might have held is lost to history hampi was one of the centers for all the wandering souls of the ancient world horses jewelry exotic spices were all traded in hampi and people would come to see this marvelous city from all over the world after centuries of isolation hampi seems to once again be at the confluence of cultures where people pour in both from the east and the west as always the known is a drop and the unknown is an ocean peace